guys welcome back to my channel today I am going to be showing you how I created this old Hollywood glam look I'm going to a New Year's Eve party tonight that is old Hollywood themed so I kind of went all out with the jewelry and the hair and the makeup so if you guys want to see how I got this hairstyle and this makeup look then keep watching all right so I'm going to start with my hair for this video um, I just got out of the shower and my hair is washed. I already put in my Olaplex number six and number seven, and we're just going to start blow drying. So here I'm just flipping my entire head over to help blow dry underneath of my hair and then also help to create more volume as well. Funny story, I actually was blow drying my hair upside down like this one time and a piece of hair like got blown upwards into my face and gave me a corneal abrasion. So that was fun. So we're just switching to the firm smoothing brush now to help kind of straighten out and smooth my hair a little bit because you can see that it's mostly dry but still a little bit wavy and frizzy in some places. You can really tell how much smoother my hair is getting by using this right now and that's exactly why I decided to do this. If I wouldn't have done this then I would have needed to go in with my straightener at the end and straighten out some of these pieces especially near my root. My hair is like always really frizzy and wavy. It's crazy how smooth and straight the Dyson Airwrap system can make your hair. I definitely wanted it for the Airwrap barrels, but it has come in handy with all the other attachments. All right, so we are ready to start curling and pinning our hair. So what you're going to need for this is just some bobby pins or duckbill clips. I decided to do duckbill clips because they were way easier for me to use. So I'm just going to section off my hair now. We're going to take the section from like the top of our, our ear up to our part and pin that off away from everything else. And then we're gonna do that same exact thing on the other side from your part down to about the top of your ear. And we're gonna separate this section into two smaller sections that are easier to work with. So now we have the front three sections separated off and now we're going to do the rest of the sections. So I'm just going from the top of my ear back all the way around. So that is going to be our first section that we start curling and pinning. It's really important that you section off your hair for this because you're just gonna have pins all over the place. So the cleaner it is, the less tangled it's going to be, the less caught in the clips it's going to be. I still had clips caught in my hair in different places and it was still kind of all over the place, but sectioning it off is going to make a big difference. I'm gonna go through and spray each section with hairspray before I curl them, just to help hold the curl a little bit more. You're gonna see throughout this video that I'm going to be putting a ton of hairspray in my hair. I don't ever use this much hairspray on a regular basis, ever. All right, so I'm just turning my curling iron on. Uh, I think I set it to about 380. That's usually where I keep the heat at. You don't wanna ever go above 400. That's so damaging for your hair. So you're just gonna wanna start by taking like a one inch section of hair and wrapping it around the barrel. You wanna wrap downward and you wanna hold the curling iron parallel to the ground and then unclamp it and sort of let it gather in the palm of your hand for a second. Scrunch it up a couple times and then you'll have this ringlet curl. So then you wanna take two fingers and just wrap that little curl that you just made around your fingers and then pin it up against your head out of the way. All of the curls should be wrapped downward. Wrap downward around your curling iron and then when you pin it up, wrap it downward. 
All right, and there's our first little pin curl. So you're gonna do that about 500 more times. One inch section of hair, wrap it around the barrel, and then hold it. Make sure you get your ends as close to the barrel as possible without burning yourself. Surprisingly enough, I didn't burn myself at all during this. You just have to be careful and give yourself plenty of time because if you're rushing through this, it's not gonna go well. So again, just let it gather in the palm of your hand, scrunch it up. Just letting it cool for a second before we release it. Look at that bouncy curl. So two fingers, wrap it around. All right, so I'm gonna finish the other side and then I'll show you what it looks like. So both sides done. This was about six pin curls, I think, three on each side. So that's just kind of what it looks like. And then we're gonna move on to the next section. So I took down some hair and then we're going to pin back up uh, basically like the, the crown section of our hair. So I'm going to finish this section all the way around and then I'll check back in. All right, so you can see now we've finished that middle section. So now we have quite a few more pin curls on our head. So we're going to move up to the crown part now. So just brushing it out, spraying it with hairspray. So now I'm just parting the section of hair to kind of follow the part that I've already created in the front of my hair. So we're gonna clip this section up so no loose hair gets caught up in the other section as we're working. So I'm gonna finish the crown of my head and then check back in. All but the front of my hair is now curled and set with pin curls. It looks like the front section is done, but it's not. Those are just the pieces that I sectioned off in the beginning of the video to keep them out of the way. So we're gonna curl those now. All right, so we're gonna just start with one of these front pieces here. So this section, we're actually gonna be splitting into three sections. I wanna make sure that these front pieces are really curled. Um, you're gonna want to brush through this, spray it with hairspray, pretty much so like we did uh, all the way around our head already. You'll see some videos will take these front pieces and they'll recommend that you do like a barrel roll or you curl these pieces backwards. Um, I don't like to do that, so I still do the downward wrap on all of these pieces around, the, around my face because I just feel like they turn out so much better. When I roll backwards, I pretty much so just get a straight piece of hair with like the tiniest little wave to it. But when I still curl it parallel to the ground, it turns out a lot better. All right, so moving on to the next front side section. Spray it with hairspray, brush through it, section it off into smaller pieces. All right, so this is the part that is a little bit different from other videos you might see. A lot of people will roll this section of their hair backwards. It might work for them, it might work for you, it doesn't work for me. So what I do is I roll these pieces downward parallel towards the ground again like I did all over my head and just make sure you remember where your part is and maintain that while you're working here all right you guys so those are pin curls all the way around my head I don't even know how many were there I couldn't even tell you but basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to work on my makeup while all of this sets and then we'll come back and take all of these out after our makeup is done so just spritz it with hairspray really well <laughs> and let it set all right so we're gonna start the makeup now so this is just my face with nothing on it I did my normal skincare routine. I look a little tan and glowy because I use glow drops. 
So we're going to start with my eyes first because my eyelashes that I'm using are Glamnetic and I have found that they stick way better when I don't have foundation or eyeshadow on my lids first. So for some reason, I don't know why I did this, I usually start with the Glamnetic eyeliner and then put a coat of mascara on, but for some reason I wasn't thinking and I started with a coat of mascara, which then made my eyeliner a little difficult, but it all worked out. So this is just the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara in black. Now we're taking the Glamnetic Magnetic Felt Tip Eyeliner Pen in the shade Deep Space. And I'm just going to put that along my upper lid. So now I'm just taking a spoolie brush and brushing through my eyelashes because they got a little clumpy after putting my eyeliner on. I'm just brushing through it so that way they blend in with the lashes better. All right, so now we are going to be using these Glamnetic lashes. They are the Virgo style. I know they advertise magnetic eyelashes to be way easier to apply than regular eyelashes, but I don't know. I have issues with both of them, so I just sort of pick what battle I want to win that day, if it's glue or if it's magnet, because I always have issues in one way or another with either. These, for some reason, you have to really make sure you put on the correct amount of eyeliner in the correct area, and I have to sort of like press the magnets on. They don't just like zap onto my face like the advertisements make it seem like they do. I think other people it works really well for, but for some reason, me, they don't work that great. It's, it's difficult to get on. But then once they're on, they're stuck on and they don't come off, so I don't know what the issue is. So now we're just going to take the Tarte Face Tape Foundation in the shade Light to Medium Sand and my Real Technique sponge, which is dampened, and we're just going to apply foundation all over our face. I'm avoiding my under eye area because I don't want to apply too many layers of makeup there to avoid like cakiness and creasing. I'm going to be putting on like a under eye correcting cream and concealer, so. I just avoid putting foundation there as well because this foundation is, is kind of thick, so I don't need all that under my eyes. All right, so here we're just blending it down our neck and chest as well just to make sure everything is seamless. There's no foundation line. Okay, so here I'm taking the Maybelline Master Camo color correcting pen in the shade Apricot. So I'm just gonna kind of spread that out with a brush under my eye. And now I'm taking the Real Technique sponge, the other side, not the side that I had my foundation on, and just blending it out. And this is way darker than it looks on the outside of the tube. I thought it was going to be more peach and it's definitely like a rusty orange color, but it still works for me, so. I'm still using it, but I definitely prefer like a lighter peach color. All right, so now I'm taking the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape in the shade Light to Medium Sand. I highly recommend this. If you have never tried this, please try it. If you've tried the original Shape Tape and you didn't like it, please try this. Um, the original Shape Tape is extremely drying. It's good for people who have oily skin. I do not have oily skin. I have dry to normal skin, I guess. Um, definitely more on the dry side. So the Ultra Creamy formula is perfect for me. You get the full coverage without the cakiness. So now I'm taking the NYX HD eyeshadow primer and I'm just going to put a couple of dots of that on my eyelid and spread that out with a brush. Now I'm taking the NYX Born to Glow Liquid Illuminator. This is in the shade Sunbeam. So now I'm taking this Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. This is one of the Create Your Own palettes. And as you can see, I love it because there is eyeshadow all over the place. 
So the color that I'm using is the pink champagne. It's a beautiful, light, sparkly pink. I like to take my eyeshadow brush and sort of dip it in a little bit of water and then dip it in the eyeshadow. It goes on a lot more pigmented and sparkly when you do that. But I'm just going to apply this from the inner corner to about the midpoint of my lid. And now we're taking this shade, it's Dusty Rose, again by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and we're going to put that from the midpoint of my lid out to the outer corner. I thought about doing like a smoky eye, but every single time I do, I just get black eyeshadow everywhere and it ends up just like too much. So I decided to not do that today. And I was sort of on a time crunch, so I didn't want to mess my makeup up. So now I'm just going to take a thin angled eyeshadow brush and dip it into this black eyeshadow. It's an Anastasia Beverly Hills shadow. I don't know if it's called anything in particular. It's literally just black. But I'm gonna kind of put that on my top lid from where I stopped with the eyeliner and bring it inward a little bit. And I'm also going to use this for a little bit of liner on my lower lash line. And now I'm just taking the Ulta Beauty Classic Felt Tip Liner Pen in the shade Black, and I'm just going to kind of create a small wing with this. So as you can see, we have a really tiny wing. Every single time I make a bigger eyeliner wing, it doesn't go well, so I've decided to just keep it simple. So now I'm using the Sephora Crayon Eyeliner Pencil in Black. Um, I got this in the Sephora Advent Calendar. I'm just gonna kind of use this to smoke out that bottom lash line and blend up into the little wing that we created. And I'm applying this a little bit to the inner corners as well. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and swipe a couple of times inward to blend out the edges of my eyeliner. I don't like to do too much underneath. I really just keep it on the outer corners because my eyes are already like pretty big and round. So if I accentuate that anymore, I just start to look kind of weird. All right, so now we're going to take our translucent air spun powder and a big fluffy brush. And I usually just sort of take the excess that's in the lid and then dab that on my nose, under my eyes, all over. So now I'm taking the Tarte Leave Your Mark eyeshadow palette and we're using the shade Speak Up to just sort of blend out our shadow along the brow bone up into our eyebrows. This is a bronzing powder by Revolution in the shade Cool. So I'm going to take my broken <laughs> brush that I use for this and just dip it in there a little bit, tap it off, and then I always dab it off onto a washcloth a little bit as well. And we're just going to kind of brush that along the hollows of our cheeks, if we had any hollows of our cheeks. <laughs> I take this kind of up along my hairline to just right above my eyebrows, and then just down my neck a little bit, down my chest a little bit. I'm gonna take this like small fluffy brush, dab it on a little bit to the bronzing powder, and then just take it down the sides of my nose a little bit. At this point, my camera died unfortunately, so I had to switch to my phone because I had to keep going since this was the look that I was creating to go out that night. But this is the Milani Baked Blush in the color Dulce Pink. And I'm just applying this to my cheeks and then a little bit on the tip of my nose. I love this blush because it kind of has like built-in highlighter to it as well. Now I'm taking the Benefit Gimme Brow Brow Gel in the shade Light Brown and brushing that across my eyebrows a little bit. I have microbladed powder brows, so I don't do a ton of filling into my eyebrows anymore, but this kind of helps to just fluff them up a little bit. And I also take the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel and I brush that over top because that holds them in place really well. 
So now I'm just finishing off my makeup with the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Budapest. I got this little guy in my NYX holiday advent calendar this year. There was a lot of really good shades in that box actually. I wanted a dark purpley red color kind of like this because when I was looking up inspiration for old Hollywood glam makeup looks, pretty much so everyone was wearing like really pretty dark lipsticks. So if you're trying to go for this type of look, definitely like a dark red or a dark purple is the way to go. So this is the finished makeup look. It's definitely like a simple glam. Um, but I think it's fitting for old Hollywood style. So going back to my hair now, we're going to start taking out all of the pin curls. And I have a teasing comb. I'm going to go through each piece of hair that I take down and tease it. I'm teasing at the root and then also a little bit down the length of the hair as well. And spraying each piece with hairspray. So I'm just gonna go through and take out all of these pin curls all the way around my head. And we're working on the front pieces now. Taking those out. Remember all of these pieces are teased. So now we're gonna start to gently brush out our hair super gently. The main goal here is to kind of just smooth it all out and we don't want these like tight ringlet curls either. So we're gonna brush those out. So now you want to pin it where it kind of naturally forms S shapes. And then you're just gonna kind of leave those pins sitting there for a little bit, hairspray it. So what I did was I pinned my hair and then I went and got dressed and put all my jewelry on. And then I came back and I took all of these clips out. Okay, so this is what my hair looked like after I went and got dressed and put all of my jewelry on and took all of those clips out of my hair. So I'm just brushing through it again and then I want some more volume on top of my hair so I'm just teasing the very top of my hair. And then I'm gonna brush this down, smooth it out, and then hairspray it really, really well so it stays in place. But this is the finished look. I will show you guys what my entire outfit looked like. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. I hope wherever you are in the world, you have an amazing day and you go out and live your best life. Bye, guys.